Hey everyone, we are back with our weekly podcast of the Football Tailgaters where we talk everything about the NFL. With me today, I have Yams, our Jets fan, Andy, and our, our <laughs> unbiased NFL fan, and myself, Aaron, a Cowboys fan. And today's list of topics, we're going to talk about the Panthers and the big news about them getting the first overall pick uh, with the trade between the Bears and them. We'll also talk about their draft, if what's who they should pick first overall. Jalen Ramsey, his new team. Sam Darnold signing with the 49ers. Aaron Rodgers. Lamar Jackson getting franchise tagged. Eckler requesting a trade. And Cowboys. There's no noise. There's, there's no noise over there. There's nothing going on. <laughs> no moves in the free agency. So we'll go over that last. Let's start with the Panthers. With a big trade. A big, big trade. Along with the Bears. The Panthers receive the number one overall pick to this coming draft, and the Bears receive a big haul of the number one, number nine overall, number sixty-one overall, and then the twenty-fourth uh, first-round pick, twenty-twenty-four first-round pick, twenty-twenty-five second-round pick, and DJ Moore, who's I think is a really good receiver. What do you guys think of this trade? I believe that was a lot, a lot that they gave up for the first overall pick. If I was actually the Panthers, since you already did this, I would actually trade down and just trade and trade that first overall pick to the Colts or the Texans and just get some first round picks back. And you can still draft your quarterback. I believe Frank Wright is actually looking at Richardson. Yeah, definitely. If that's the who they're trying to get is Richardson, maybe not get the number one pick. As a Bears fan, though, that's that's a win win for them. Uh, they are uh, they're clearly the one that won the trade here. But I don't know. Carolina might not. Me- we don't. I don't want them to mess us up. Cause you know, look what happened to Trey Lance. So I'm kind of nervous for them. I think we can finally. I, Justin Fields seems like he can get a grasp of air. He finally has someone to throw to. That's a big point, right? DJ Moore. The Bears definitely won this trade, and with all the picks that they got besides that, it's 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 a pretty easy win here. And I think with DJ Moore being there, it, the Bears are gonna see an instant improvement, and they got some pretty good draft capital along with that. Yeah, for sure. But I mean, the Bears clearly just won this <laughs> this trade completely because they got DJ Moore and well, this first round pick and next year's and then second round pick this year. And I believe a second round pick in 2026, I believe, or something like that. So yeah, for sure. They actually redeemed themselves from that awful trade from Mitch Trubitsky. And that's kind of why I say hopefully that they do get this right because trades like this make me nervous. It happens to the Bears when they got Trubisky. It's happening to the 49ers with Trey Lance, which we haven't seen how, how he plays, but we know he can't stay healthy. Yeah. But yeah, clearly the Bears are the winner here. And I'm not going to say, you know, Young or Stroud or Richardson not might, not might be good or might be good. They might be great. I just don't know. But we at least know that um, the Bears won the crazy. Yeah, year. honestly, I don't remember when's the last time somebody gave up so much to get a quarterback and it panned out well. I've seen quarterbacks <laughs> do really well in the like just not moving, right? Just being on the first overall pick like right. Andrew Luck or Joe Burrow, uh, so on and so forth. So and but nobody going to trade up to get somebody. I don't remember what was the last time that that panned out correctly. So since you guys are mentioning that uh, and you guys were saying that Frank Wright, uh, they're they're planning on getting Richardson the quarterback right. uh and do you guys think like is that the move should they pick him first overall or who should they go with the Panthers I don't know I in the pro Bowl, was it the combine yeah the combine I liked Richardson a lot um CJ Stroud also kind of impressed me I guess I'm like with the others young is kind of short he was wearing some high heels tennis shoes so I don't know there's only been two successful one quarterbacks that are short or of his height and that's Drew Brees and Russell Wilson and Russell Wilson's on the train down so that would make me really nervous picking Bryce Young yeah I would tell too I would go ahead and let Frank Gripe get his quarterback if he thinks it's Richardson I totally just believe him but picking him first overall I think you did yourself a disservice there I you probably you maybe would have been able to pick him up like in the mid of the uh, in the of the first top 10 picks so they can actually pull something really smart and just like I said trade down and and get Richardson yeah I agree I think it's a reach to get the number one overall pick for Richardson right he's assumed to go around the fourth quarterback being picked in the draft so you could have, like you guys said, you could easily fit that within the one in 10 pick. 
So you could have had a trade between the Texans, maybe even the Cardinals, Colts. So you you had your options there, and I think they're just trying to secure it. They're maybe being overprotective with their decisions here, and they're they're easily being aggressive with this. And who knows? It maybe it's a big risk. It might not work out for them. Yeah, and I don't know if you guys remember the movie Draft Day. It looks it's panning out exactly a little bit like that. That they gave a lot to get the first overall pick, many first round picks, and then it could happen in the draft day, just like Kevin Costner did, to trade with a, with another team to get all of their first round picks back and then get the <sighs> guy that they wanted in the very first place. I don't think that I don't think that's what's going to happen. I think they're going to pick a quarterback at number 1. Well, I'm going to call G, the GM of the Panthers Kevin Costner if they do pull this off. Yeah, it's I don't I don't really like the move they did here. <laughs> it wasn't the best. Just like the movie, everybody was hating on them for doing this type of move. <laughs> <laughs> they were all, all the media, everybody was saying that's crazy. All, of, but what are the chances yeah. they can shut us up? Do you think this actually pans out the way they want it to? It it would only shut us up if they actually win games with the pick that they're gonna do, whichever quarterback it is. That right. will shut people up. It's the only way if they win. If it turns out that they win, yeah. And who's in their no, division yeah. now? At Derek Carr with the Saints. I think that's the biggest threat right now. So yeah, it's not gonna work out. I feel like it's not gonna work out. The Jets traded down for Sam Donald didn't work out. Chicago traded down for Trubisky didn't work out. Forty Nine traded tra- up. You mean? I think that's how it is. <laughs> Or am I wrong? You trade. Trade, trade up or trade yeah, down? <laughs> I think it's trade up. Whenever you trade up, you're going to the number, towards number one. Yeah. So, so what, how you yeah. were trying to meant is just the opposite. Yeah, so it's trade up. Uh, my point is made. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's, let's shift on over now to a veteran quarterback, cornerback, sorry, with Jalen Ramsey. He is now no longer with the Los Angeles Rams. He is now part of the Miami Dolphins in the big trade. And well, what, are, what are you guys' thoughts on that? On Jalen Ramsey being now on the Dolphins. And I believe the Rams got a third round pick in return. It is, a, it is an upgrade. They had Byron Jones as their cornerback and they recently cut him and he Byron Jones said some things on on Twitter to like new uh, players coming in to just take care of yourself and protect yourself don't believe all the NFL doctors so on and so forth and if you compare Byron Jones with Ramsey I'm I'm saying Ramsey is is better than Byron Jones of course so they did get an upgrade good for Dolphins yeah the def- Dolphins definitely needed to get a cornerback after informing Byron Jones he was released so yeah it's a t- i agree with andy it's an upgrade for sure it kind of annoys me as a jets fan but hopefully i get some news uh, that'll make me happy tomorrow tick tock with that rogers thing <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely an upgrade especially like you guys are mentioning it's just it's the whole byron jones situation now you're talking about the the cap space too or i guess i'll bring that up with Jalen Ramsey and with the whole like because the way the the salary cap is working I think the Rams have like a a 19.6 19 million dead money on their salary cap so it's it's a it's a situation for the Rams that it's tough you know they have no draft capital and they have a ton of veterans kind of leaving just they're they're gone the Bobby Wagner has gone right right Leonard Floyd is gone now Jalen Ramsey is traded away I think Allen Robinson is going to leave suit too. So if I'm a Rams fan, that kind of just, that just sucks. And their hopes for a Super Bowl is definitely diminishing. And it seems just like, it, it's it's kind of an awkward position because they, they're they not, like, where's the draft capital? It's all gone now because they were trading for big time superstars, right? Yeah, didn't they say that they wanted to maybe trade Matthew Stafford as well, their starting quarterback? So is this some kind of like slow blow up of the team is this like you know like what's going on here so for them it's just a sucky situation yeah. but for the dolphins it's a huge win so glad to see the dolphins making some significant moves but they still got other situations they got to figure out their quarterback why not let why why not move over to Sam Darnold now uh Yams, you like Sam Darnold, don't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so he signed with the 49ers. Do you think he's going to be a starter? There is an excellent chance that Darnold does start for the 49ers. He, starting now, he is the healthiest quarterback going into that team. Brock Purdy, I think, is getting a surgery, so I don't know if he'll be ready for the offseason, but he's, in my opinion, also the more talented quarterback on the roster now. So, yeah, I definitely do see him starting. It's tough because Purdy did a... Pretty good job, like we keep saying, right? Uh, you have, 
he went all the way to the NFC Championship and lost against the Eagles. And if he didn't get hurt, who knows what would have happened in that NFC Championship. I would continue saying if I'm the 49ers that Purdy is the quarterback. And um, and let's see what happens in training camp. If Sam Darnold does play better than Purdy, then I would go and give it to, to Sam Darnold. But for now, I would continue saying to the team, Purdy is our starting quarterback. Yeah, 49ers have a tough situation with Trey Lance and Brock Purdy being injured. And there needs to be some kind of competition. And the best they could get is apparently Sam Darnold. So with Jimmy Garoppolo leaving now, it really opens up the situation for them. And we don't rule out, I don't rule out, Aaron Rodgers. Sorry, Ems. But it's it's with this whole like kind of murky situation with Aaron Rodgers, we don't really know what he's going to do yet. So there's totally a possibility that he could sign with the 49ers. So this is this seems like a more of a 49ers. This is our backup play here. I don't think he's going to be a starter once the season starts. But as of now, it, it seems like he will be the starter until whatever other situation pops up. It, it seems like this is a move. It's kind of like a chess move, thinking like three steps ahead, you know? I don't think Aaron Rodgers is going to the 49ers. He already ruled that out himself, that he is not going to the 49ers. You don't think he can change his mind? I don't think he can change his mind. What if he doesn't like what he sees with the Jets? I don't think this man can change his mind because he holds a grudge. I think you struck the nerve, Aaron, <laughs> honestly. No, 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 I'm just saying that it's not going to happen. And I mean, yeah, it might not be the Jets, but I just don't think it's the 49ers. Why are we dismissing Trey Lance? Because he's injured. Yeah, but... He's injured. It seems like 49ers don't have faith in him. They you, juggled with him being a starter with along with Jimmy Garoppolo. You gave a They're lot not, for him. Wouldn't you, like... you? I mean, if this is your starting quarterback, Sam Darnold, Purdy, and Trey Lance, for me, you still have an opportunity for Trey Lance to shine. I would just tell all the quarterbacks, it's an open competition through, through training camp. And whoever's better is the starting quarterback. I would trade... I would trade him. I would trade him. Get some picks. Trey Lance? Yeah. You would trade him? What are you going to get for him, honestly? A second round? Because, mm, I don't know who would get he, Maybe it's a, it's a big gamble with him. It, they they got to decide. They, they got to, so it seems like this might be a, for signing Darnold, it's going to be a Trey Lance is starting or we're trading him and, and Sam Darnold is starting. But I think, I don't think Sam Darnold's going to be a starter. I think he's going to be a backup. And it is a 50-50 on Trey Lance being a starter right now. Oh, Trey Lance. Okay. The problem with the 49ers also, I see, is they have three injured quarterbacks. Now, yeah. how many times is, did Trey Lance go down? Every single I, year. Like, twice, yeah, right? Every, since he's been, since he's in, been the yeah, in the yeah. league. So, so it's been three years. He's been going down each year. Each year, right? Mm -hmm. Sam yeah. Donald's the same thing. And yeah. now Brock, Brock Purdy, he went down in his first year too. So he, they're just getting a whole bunch of injury-prone well, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna give Purdy a pass. I'm gonna give Purdy a pass because sure. he got injured and this is his first injury. He didn't yeah, start the yeah. whole season. He didn't start the but, whole season. Yeah, but we'll, we'll see. But yeah, this Trey is a repeating Lance, pattern though with every 49ers quarterback. What's going on over there? Well, it is very interesting that they keep getting quarterbacks for the cheap for for cheapness. Uh, I, I think the highest one that they got was Jimmy Garoppolo for a second round pick. But besides that, is they haven't gone out. How come they didn't go and ask for Derek Carr to come over to the 49ers or make a big try to get um, Aaron Rodgers? Like there hasn't been any noise from them trying to get a big time quarterback or trading for one, too. What about Baker Mayfield? No, I reach out to him, too. Actually, there was a report that the 49ers were interested in Baker Mayfield, but I don't know what happened there. Maybe like recently, yeah. because it, but there was one before he signed with the Panthers. No, this no, is right? this is recently. Oh, okay. This is like yeah. like a last week, right? But we'll see. Okay, so I did mention Aaron Rodgers earlier, and apparently I struck a nerve with the Amps. Sorry, but let let's talk about him now and his situation. There's it's it's kind of been radio silent. There's some news speculation that it seems like he's made a done deal with the Jets, but nothing's confirmed right now. Let's talk about his situation and bring up the question: Is Aaron Rodgers being selfish right now? What do you guys think? Of course he is. That's Aaron Rodgers. Aaron Rodgers is known for being selfish. Let's not, let's not make any mistake about it. It's known, right? But I also think he hates the media and he hates them to make speculations on what his moves are so he only lets maybe five three i don't know who's part of his inner circle they're the only ones that know that's going on but yeah he is selfish i don't think this starts off on the wrong foot with the team it's just you kind of know how he is yeah well 
you can see it in two ways. As a football fan, it is a really frustrating and annoying. And you would consider selfish. He's selfish in a negative format and everything. But if you are like really close to him, a family member, a brother, or best best friend, and with all of his career and everything, you would just tell him like, dude, the the NFL doesn't really care like about you as an employee. They just want you like to play, be the entertainment. So you take your time. You do what you need to do. And you have two teams waiting for you. And that's how good you are. Just take your time. But as an NFL fan, it is really frustrating. This is something you see more on the NBA side where it's very star favored, very player favored. And it's uh, they have more power, it seems like. Here at the, the NFL, it seems like with these players, they're starting to get that kind of power. And we're seeing that with Aaron Rodgers. And he's 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 getting what he's gonna desire, I guess. That's a great point. situation. Yeah, that's a great point you make, Aaron. But if you can also look at this situation with Aaron Rodgers, he's a, he is one of the best quarterbacks in NFL history. But look at the situation that's going on with Lamar Jackson. I believe the Lamar with the Lamar Jackson situation, it's a way to push the player down and not make it like an NBA type of situation, like you're saying. And all the owners are like talking to each other. We're like, we're not going to give this guy what he wants and just be a, like a superstar driven league like the NBA is. Yeah. I mean, definitely. I don't, what? I just, I don't think the NFL owners are colluding against. That's super strange that they're not like nobody's going after him. Like all of a sudden, like there's no teams willing to get him. Mm. I know that Lamar Jackson is not like a the biggest superstar ever but he is going to change the way the uh, like a team that's losing a lot of games he's going to win you a lot of games and if you want that if you want to be part of the playoffs you go and get Lamar Jackson besides Aaron Rodgers i'm saying it's Lamar Jackson right and and then if Derek Carr and then the rest but Lamar Jackson he is a a franchise type of quarterback of course he has been getting injured each year but that's the type of player that is he is a superstar in the NFL I, I guess this is a kind of a different question is then is the NFL owners colluding against Lamar Jackson I don't think so I think it's just he is in an ugly situation right now where they put a non-exclusive franchise tag on him and now they have to give up two picks to get him yeah i think that goes into our next question if i'm not yeah 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 yeah. my bad (laughs) yeah all good all good so he got franchise tagged (laughs) big big deal there and you guys were mentioning some of that little bit of that situation about kind of playing his his hype down toning it down baltimore ravens franchise tag him is there a team that's willing to give up some draft capital for him in my opinion, it's the Jets. It's the New York uh-uh. Jets. And the reason I'm saying is because they are desperate just to get a franchise quarterback. They haven't had a franchise quarterback in decades. So this is the, this is the opportunity that they have. Either it's Aaron Rodgers well, he's taking forever to make a decision, or it's Lamar Jackson. And give those two first round picks for him and give him the money that maybe not the whole 250, but try to give him what he uh, close to what he wants. I I mean, yeah, that would be awesome, right? I just don't know if Joe Douglas, the GM, is willing to give up that much in draft picks for him. Uh, but the team, I, I don't see a team. But if I had to think of one, maybe the Colts. They're sitting at number four right now. Maybe give up your number four for Lamar Jackson, then picking up a question, question mark quarterback, you know, CJ Stroud, Richardson, or um, Bryce Young. Uh, who else is there? Levis? Louis? Louis? Levis? I would say, you know, go and get Lamar Jackson. You're sitting at number four. Give up your number four pick, then your future first round. So the Colts. It it you have to see what team is willing to do that, and we don't know. There hasn't been any like big news of like the teams like the Colts that you know a team like the Colts right now they're completely dysfunctional. If Lamar goes there, I don't expect them to be in the playoffs just like that. And if assuming like that's how I think the situation would be, and if I was the Baltimore Ravens, I'd be like, give me your drafts, give me your draft picks. I would gladly, you know, do that because I would just get these high picks. That doesn't seem like the situation is that. And I kind of I, I kind of agree with Andy here with Lamar Jackson and the Jets because Derek Carr is gone. Jimmy Garoppolo is gone. Your options are dwindling. And you have some speculation with Aaron Rodgers and his age, 39 years old. It doesn't seem like he's someone as fit as like Tom Brady. I don't know if you can trust them to take your team as and, and be that franchise quarterback to take them to the Super Bowl. He could totally do that. I could be totally wrong. 
but you want someone a little bit more secure, a little bit more like you're guaranteed you're getting someone who's still pretty young, obviously. That's the clear, I think, idea here that we got is you're getting someone younger and he's just still as talented. Now, the only thing, yeah, he's a running quarterback and he has been dealing with some injuries recently. So we have to see kind of with that, but that I'd rather take someone who's a lot younger and I don't know the style of the Jets right now. What, what, what's going on with their friend, with their quarterback? Well, I, like, how, I, how are they going to go with this? Are they going to get someone who's going to be more of an improviser, like Aaron Rodgers? I think he's a, a mentor scrambler? to Zach Wilson. That's why they're getting Aaron Rodgers is to be a mentor to Zach Wilson because they don't want to. But let's just say that Aaron Rodgers just retires right now. Yeah. Then I, yeah, I guess go ahead and get Lamar Jackson. But I think a lot with or that surrounds Lamar Jackson. It's kind of. A lot of com- complications, right? You have the mother being the agent, which if it works out, great for him. Not only that, it's he's non-franchise tagged. And then on top of that, yeah, he's young. But look at his injuries and look at the history. He, has, he hasn't been able to take yeah. the Baltimore's to the next level because he's injured. So right. that's something that they're, you know, you know, let's let's think about this twice. Is I'm not saying great. that that's the correct decision. I'm just saying that the team... I wouldn't be surprised if the Jets would actually go because they're so desperate at quarterback. Yeah. Joe Douglas, yeah. the, the, the GM, and Salah need to win. They need to get to that playoffs. They are actually playing or being like for their jobs. So they need to make a big splash, and they need to get that franchise. That's why they're waiting for Aaron Rodgers. No, and maybe you, people are listening now. Maybe Aaron Rodgers already made this decision, so I'm, I apologize. Maybe that's the case. You, but... The situation is that they need to make a big splash, and they haven't had a quarterback. Look, they had Sam Darnold. They had Zach Wilson. Before that, they've been... Who, who do they have before that? They were, like, jumping Oh, with uh, Fitzpatrick, and then they had Mark Sanchez. So mm-hmm. it's been quarterbacks after Geno quarterbacks. Smith. Oh, Geno Smith. So they need their franchise quarterback. They're thriving and thirsty for that franchise quarterback. I understand, but you guys have to understand that I feel that Aaron Rodgers already gave their decision to the Jets and it's to the Jets. So that's why they have there is no reason for them to let Derek Carr walk if they didn't feel like they secured Aaron Rodgers. I, you know you don't know that. Honestly, they they're just really hoping. They're like, "You know what? I'm just going to hope for for Aaron Rodgers to just make this decision." Yeah, what if Derek Carr was like, "If you don't sign me now, you know, it's like I'm going to some other team which is the Saints." Yeah, and I agree with and, you. Yeah, if they, if, if I go to visit the Jets and we sit down and they're like, hey, man, we like you. You're going to be a Hall of Famer, uh, probably. But you know what? We're going to go and wait for Aaron Rodgers. Like, OK, yeah. fine. But I'm going to do my own thing. Yeah. I'm not going to wait for you. Yes. And I think that's exactly what happened. I think Derek Carr is like, no, you like you. I'm just a second option to you. I'm leaving to someone who treats me like a first option. Exactly. A hundred percent. I think it's, that dinner or whatever that visit was, it was a waste of time. No, it was he, him. He using, actually got a free lunch. He had a free dinner. It was and, him <laughs> using leverage to get what he wanted at the Saints. Saints was the first team he visited while he was still with the Raiders. I guess that's a good point. All right. Let's move on from that and we'll see what happens right now. There's no news about Aaron Rodgers. Uh, there is news. So, you just need to look at the tweets. No, the, well, it's not confirmed. There's, no, there's, there's nothing confirmed. It's all speculation right now. No matter who tweets it's it out until... It's confirmed speculation. <laughs> and that's <laughs> very confusing. <laughs> so let's move on to another trade talk and go over Austin Eckler. Big time quarterback. Or sorry, running back. I keep saying quarterback because we've been talking about the quarterbacks. Big time running back, especially in fantasy. Eckler re- requests a trade. So he no longer wants to be with the Chargers. Where will he go? Oh, that kind of surprised me that he asked for a trade. One of the teams that pop up to my head might have been maybe the Eagles. They are known to be one Ooh. of the most aggressive. I would hate that. <laughs> <laughs> most aggressive teams in the NFL as far as making moves and stuff like that. And they like to recycle the running back. So why not? They have Miles Sanders, who did pretty great, but he's a free agent. So I don't know if he's staying or leaving, but. I mean, I can see Eckler being an amazing replacement to Sanders. I'm going to continue with who I thought Derrick Henry should go to, and it's the Buffalo Bills. That team needs a running back. If they get a big star running back, then they might get into that hump and to get into that Super Bowl that they need. Josh Allen needs some help, and a star running back would, especially like Eckler or Derrick Henry, would be a tremendous help to get them to the Super Bowl. I wouldn't rule out the Cowboys. (laughs) 
But they're known not to make any moves, so not the Cowboys. I would love for him to go to the Cowboys. Don't think that will happen. I do think somewhere like Buffalo Bills is a great destination for him, as well as the Eagles. I would hate the Eagles to get him. That would be terrible, but it would be a smart move for them. Uh, they are making some other moves, like they, they re-signed some of their players. Uh, Jace, uh, Jason Kelsey's coming back. Brandon Graham's coming back. So I can see, yeah, I can see the Eagles or the Bills picking him up. It's going to be tough. I'm surprised he's even seeking a trade. Was it? Did he? Were they not able to? Seal he a saw. Deal he or? saw Kellen Moore on his way, and he's like, "I'm out. I'm out. I'm running away." Oh, that's true. Because Kellen Moore Our shies away done. from the run. I don't know if he you saw that report. He didn't say anything bad. He didn't say anything bad about it. He talked about it. I think it was on um on Undisputed with uh, Shannon Sharp and, and Skip Bayless. But they were talking about that live when that happened, and he. He seemed fine about Kellen Moore, so I don't know what's going on. What went down to make him want that? Yeah, want him the like, Chargers he, are he a wants it. good team. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe he wants money. I don't know. I don't know what he wants. I, I, like it, it was such a confusing. That's why I was so surprised when I like first found out about yeah. this. Well, why would he do this? Well, I don't know if you heard the report since you're the Cowboys fan that Mike McCarthy kind of shredded Kellen Moore for the way he would do his. His calls, um, he wanted to, and I'll quote here from the New York Post, um, he wanted to light up the scoreboard. So he told, McCarthy's told the reporters at the Combine, NFL Combine, that, but I wanted to run the damn ball so I can rest my defense. Well, I mean, that the Cowboys were a top scoring league from the, he, they were like top two or top three of the best like scoring out of the whole NFL. But I do agree with McCarthy that they should have run the ball more. And something that McCarthy did when he was with the Green Bay they ran that ball constantly. All of the running backs that the, the Green Bay Packers had were always getting the, the ball. And Stark, um, Lindsey, uh, I'm pretty sure I'm missing some of us. have a lot of other running backs, but those are the ones that, that I remember. And even like the short passes, Aaron Rodgers loves those short passes. So I think... If you're into fantasy, I believe the Cowboys running backs are going to be stars. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, but hey, maybe this is one of the reasons why Austin Eckler wants to leave. Maybe yeah, the word is point. goes around, rumors right. start, and yeah, Kellen Moore doesn't really run the ball. So why don't I point. just get paid more now at my prime where I have these good numbers? And maybe when Kellen Moore comes, maybe my numbers will start to decline. He has a big contract as well. He has four years. So it's up to 2028. His contract is four years, $24.5 million, $24. million with the $6 million signing yeah, bonus. Didn't they sign him last year? They signed him in 2020. Oh. That's when they signed him. Oh, that might mistake. Yeah. Maybe that's just a contract. The discussions just never materialized, and he just said, let's just move on. But- so this is his last year. This coming season is his last year on his contract, and he's going to be a free agent in 2024. And maybe so- like, like you guys are saying... Since this is last year, he needs to make a big splash in order to get that second contract. Yeah. Now, why? Uh, what, what about the, the Bears? Yeah. They had this situation with, um, I'm trying to remember his name. He got injured. Herbert? But it wasn't Terry Cohen. Who was it? Oh. Because they have Khalil Herbert. Right. Oh, the one be- oh, Montgomery. Oh, Montgomery. 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 Yeah. Montgomery got injured. And I, I don't know. I thought... Khalil Herbert was pretty good. Mm-hmm. I don't know what they think of their running back situation, but I also wouldn't rule out a complete like dynamic duo of Justin Fields. Like you're adding more weapons, and why not? Because I think if I'm not mistaken, the Bears have the most cap space right now, and they could sign a big contract with him. Right, and they could they could have DJ Moore, Justin Fields, and Austin Eckler on the offense, and that would be pretty good. That would be really good for them for sure. And they still have their picks for the draft this Oof. year. Yeah, they might be. Well, I mean, it's a trade, though. What what would the Chargers ask for? I'm not giving that top that like first round top pick for Eckler. I'm sorry, I wouldn't. So no, they they got the no- number nine overall, and then they got what 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 they get from. So they got the number nine overall. They got the sixty one overall, and then they got next year's first round pick from the Panthers, and then the second round pick from the Panthers in 2025. I that maybe that haul that they got for that number one overall pick can go to Austin Eckler. Yeah, perhaps. Did you mention how much cap space they have? They have. They have seventy five million. So. Yes. They have one of the top most cap yeah. space out of all the teams. This, or they're number one. Number it's one, Bears, yeah. Fal- Falcons, and then Broncos. Yeah. So they do, they are capable of getting him for sure. 
The only thing, and, and that, they have with all those draft picks. I mean, I would give like two second rounds for Eckler. Yeah, for sure. I could oh, do yeah. that. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. But not the first it, round. I can definitely you, see I, the Eagles or the Bears making that kind of a move. The I don't, Eagles can't because uh, they can't even afford all their players. All their players are leaving. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Buffalo will. They they never do those type of flash plays for running backs. Well, they, they need to. Yeah, they well, just last don't. year they were like getting from left and right type of running backs. Man, it just didn't work. Who do they? They were desperate. Hyde. No, that's not who they got. Hines. 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 Yeah, from the Colts. It's it. I I think now that I'm like figuring this out, I think this is a Bears thing. I think this is an opportunity for the Bears to make a move. And it doesn't and, affect the Chargers either because he he will go to the exactly. NFC. Exactly. Yeah. Because another team I was thinking is maybe the Broncos because the Broncos were also just as desperate looking for a running back. But why are they gonna trade within their own division, right? Exactly. So, but you know, if I'm the Chargers, I, I would just talk to him and make him try to stay. <laughs> like talk to Kellen Moore and there's a good chance it might happen yeah whatever that reason is that he wants a trade I would try to work it out with him before yeah I hit the market uh, it's it's very interesting and this might be one of the things that's going to be cool to see going forward throughout the offseason so let's move on to the Cowboys uh a complete 180 situation here radio silent right now in the free agency moves that they've done nothing Nothing. Zero. Absolutely zero. What do you guys think about the Cowboys not making any free agency moves, guys? First off, no one should be shocked of how the Cowboys are handling the free agency. Um, secondly, if they like their guys so much, why don't they just make sure that the deals are done before the deadline instead of putting so much pressure on yourself? And I guess it's just how they are. They feel the Dallas Cowboys just feel like they can run it back with their own guys again. I'm getting their big splash. That if there is a big splash, they're gonna get a wide receiver like Adam Thielen or something like it's that. It's Odell Beckham. <laughs> that, oh God, I, I don't, not. I don't, I don't know. I think Odell Beckham wants a lot of money, and it, the Jones family is not paying too much right now. They pay too much in house. That's how they got stuck with the big Dak deal, the big Zeke deal, and the Marcus Lawrence deal. So I don't think that'll happen. Uh, one, just one more thing is. I know you are a Cowboys fan, Aaron, and you watch all teams build around their franchise quarterback. Do you feel that maybe the Cowboys don't feel they have a quarterback franchise to build around? You're asking me if Dak is a franchise QB? Right. The Cowboys probably feel that he's not a franchise quarterback worth building around. That that might be a sign of why they're not signing anyone. Maybe maybe they're looking at all the options right now on the table. And it's it's kind of overwhelming in that situation if you think about it because that changes everything. Once you start rethinking about your quarterback position, everything's on the table. It, it just complicates things a lot more. And this is... It, it, this is something where they they put themselves in this position. It, it was just just dumb dumb moves after dumb moves. They with the whole like the way they took so long with Dak signing the the way they dealt with the Zeke contract. It was just everything. Everything about that was just a whole mess. I can and hear there's the doubt. There's there, there's doubt within themselves within the front office. There's doubt. And a, a thing I was thinking about, I was like, okay. M- why isn't there kind of like this attraction towards the Cowboys? It's a big market team. It's, you know, that like ratings came out of like, um, they're rating like how good is the team's like facilities and stuff like that. The Cowboys were on the top, like top three, top, top, top five. What, like, why isn't it attractive for players that are, especially that are free agents to make their way over there? What's going on over there? Is there some kind of like, is there some dysfunction? Is there some complications? Is there the ownership that's kind of scary? Because we see that Jerry Jones treats his players like his, like it's his son, his children. He 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 puts he puts a lot of like a lot of uh he gets attached to these players. And I I don't I don't know what's going on over there. What what they think of Dak right now? I think right now everything's open to them. I think right now they're definitely. Thinking about him not being the franchise quarterback and possibly moving on from him. Well, but they're being really quiet because I think they're watching every other teams make their moves and then they're gonna do something. I think that the but, pl- players out there that that are th- there have been players out there that have been wanting to go to the Cowboys and the last one that I can think of about is Von Miller and just the Cowboys didn't want to do didn't even try to sign him. 
Earl Thomas was another one. I believe a while back was Adrian Peterson wanted to sign as well. There have been players that are interested to be a cowboy, but just the cowboys don't, Jerry Jones and the family don't don't look that way. They like to do everything in-house for some odd reason. Now, I with Yam's like a question with Dak Prescott, I do believe the Cowboys are still hoping for Dak to take him to the Super Bowl. And for this stuff, not buildings uh, around him, I think it's going to be a Mike McCarthy type of situation for him to show what he can do with the pieces around uh, that are available because the Cowboys don't have too much of cap space. So it's up to Mike McCarthy to show what he can do with the pieces around him. And they're probably going to add wide receivers. I know last year they added Washington, which was a disaster. I think he only played one game and just left. (laughs) Uh, Not a good signing at all. Exactly, exactly. They they still got to worry about Schultz, too. Well, yeah, Schultz is probably going to leave. The last time that they made a big splash was Amari Cooper, and they did exceptionally well. So I'm hoping that the Cowboys do a big splash, like getting Hopkins. Hopkins would actually put this team into another big-time level maybe win another playoff game Man. that they're usually in and but in this type of situation i do think that the cowboys still hope that Cow- that dak prescott is the franchise quarterback i mean my closing thoughts is that yeah this is most likely what they're thinking of besides the options are all available for them that they're looking at everything because this is desperation mode for them as it seems like it is every year i don't know why but it it it's again it's they're in desperation mode maybe i don't know maybe they'll they'll pull something like that like you were mentioning andy but you're sitting here and you're looking at all the free agents just slip by and it's also maybe it's no it's definitely a money problem too because of the way they've they've been handling their contracts so you still got some pretty good names available some veterans right you got bobby wagner i i, I don't think he's been signed yet as of now you you got some other names adam thielen so you so you got other players right what, what what's going on why so quiet there's something going on that we don't know and it's it's kind of worrying it's it's worrying what they have over there but that, those are my closing thoughts i don't know what you guys think like what else i don't think the deandre hopkins trade to cowboys is going to happen i think he ends up somewhere like the patriots I just think they're It'd not feeling... It would be awesome feeling... to see him with the Cowboys. It will be awesome. They need someone to help out with CD, opposite CD. Yep. CD needs needs to be a compliment more than the face of the wide receiver core. And it's no diss to him. He's a great wide receiver. I I wouldn't discredit him for like what he's done. He's done great things, right? But you need a little bit more mustard because Dak can't carry it. Dak can't do it. So it's done. Like this is this is probably his final year of the Cowboys being you're a franchise quarterback and that's it. Yeah. I don't know. Again, emotionally attachment like situation here with Jerry Jones and his players. Who knows? Maybe he's he's gonna be there longer, sadly. Great guy though. <laughs> is that all for you guys? Yeah, yeah, that that's it. Beyond it happens on the couple. Yeah, and I'm sure there's gonna be a lot of more free agents and signings and it's gonna be an interesting week for sure. Yeah. All right, yeah, that's going to be it for today. Thank you guys for listening to the very end, and we'd love to see you guys giving your opinion with us on our social media, which is football underscore tailgaters on YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. Thank you guys for listening, and we'll see you guys on the next episode. Thank you.